Broadway Boxing Gym in South LA has been turning out boxers for more than 40 years. It's seen its ups and its downs, but just like every prize fighter, it keeps on getting up to fight another day. But when all was lost and it looked like the gym was down for the count, three men came together to save and preserve the neighborhood gym. Closed at a time when all gyms were closing. Ours closed for a different reason. You know, we had lost Miss Larkins and Roth, and then things were just kind of in limbo. And we have the opportunity to, to keep it in the hands of people that know this, the purpose that it served. We, we get together with like-minded people who have that vision and have the connections to see it through. And uh, we put our money where our hearts are, you know, where our mouth is. Put our money where our hearts are. I love that. Here to tell us why this is so important to the neighborhood of South Central Los Angeles is rapper D Smoke, an entrepreneur, artist G Perico, who's also an entrepreneur, investor and entrepreneur David Gross. Thank you all so much for being here. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having us, Mimi. Uh huh. Um, so, D Smoke, I want to start with you. Take me back to the beginning. Make us understand from your point of view why the boxing gym holds such value, not only to you, but to the neighborhood. Um, well, it starts off personally. Uh, Broadway Boxing Gym was a safe haven for me. Um, I had recently lost one of my close friends um, who I did music with. And music, which uh, used to be an outlet, it didn't feel the same. And so I, when I stepped in the Broadway gym, I thought I could fight. Until I until I boxed the real boxer, and then I, I just got humbled, and then it, it set me off on a journey to really improve myself, um, physically, spiritually, and uh, and in a, in a new craft. So, and it, it's it's meant that to me as well as like thousands of other people who have set foot in there, including the likes of Denzel Washington has been there, um, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson, like a lot of people have set foot in there. Mm. You know, that's so interesting. Um, G. Perico, I want to move on to you because I've watched the documentary and your story is also so very interesting to me. Now, I know you started rapping at the gym. Uh, your first studio was actually downstairs at the gym. And you say in the doc, you know, as right. soon as you got home, you got to work. Talk to me about what that process was like, because it felt like the same neighborhood where maybe you got in trouble at was the same neighborhood that actually ended up saving you. Um, that gym was in that same neighborhood, your neighborhood. Yes, definitely. Uh, the gym, Miss Larkin, uh, just helped provide a safe haven for me in order to, you know, transition. She always seen the good in people, and she believed in like tough love and, um, you know, her assistance by letting me be there, you know, helped me transition into what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. um, and so you were able to go there and and go downstairs and make your music there. How how was that? Talk to us about what that felt like. Um, I mean, it was, it was actually fun. Like a lot of times during the daytime, you'll hear people like getting, like fighting upstairs and people get knocked down. I go up there and work out. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, from the intro, it was definitely, uh, difficult trying something new and, uh, setting, setting foot in a new world. Uh, you know, I was accustomed to naturally like street things, but, uh, uh, you know, I just stay focused. I use the same determination that the boxers had. Like, I, I had a lot of friends that was boxing upstairs. So, you know, they'll be getting ready for fights and I'll be putting together projects, you know? Yeah, I do know. Um, you know, David, your story, you know, I know your story very, very well. I know you grew up about 10 minutes from the gym. Um, talk to us a little bit about um, your background and how you um, got hooked up with Broadway boxing as well. Sure. I actually got... I got put on the opportunity from uh, Smoke. Mm -hmm. So Smoke reached out to me and was like, look, man, I have this gym that um, he knew I boxed a little bit. So he's like, I have this gym that um, I used to box at when I was growing up. And I, I learned he was a pretty serious boxer um, before music. And he was like, it's down for the count, but I love it. And I want to bring it back. And um, it was a pretty natural, a pretty natural progression for us to reach out to uh, Perico. We both had relationships with him. So I got put on by Smoke. Like he just hit me up. Talk to me about the significance, though, of the boxing of the gym and why it was so important for you guys to um, save this particular gym. What, I know all three of you had your different reasons, but overall, the big scheme of things, why this gym? Yeah, so say, for me, it's, oh, you, you go first, folks. <laughs> I would say uh, Broadway Boxing Gym is LA's gym. Okay. Um, you have these peripheral gyms, you have 
uh, you know, Long Beach has a couple boxing gyms. You have Wild Card in, in Hollywood. But when you talk about Los Angeles boxing, um, there is no other gym that has the, the depth of history and has has touched so many lives as Broadway Boxing Gym. And that's a large part due to Miss Larkins, mm -hmm. her uh, her former husband, and, uh, and then as well as her son, Rafael, rest in peace, mm -hmm. all of them. So, um, David, Miss Larkin passed away after a long battle with cancer. Her son inherits the gym. Then weeks later, he passes away. The deed gets transferred to the bank. The gym shuts down. Tell me what the next move with, was with the three of you. How did you guys spring into action, and what did you guys do? Um, Somebody at the gym reached out to, to D Smoke. Mm -hmm. um, he tapped me, and we automatically said it's a go. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't know some of the backstory at the time when we jumped out and said we were going to buy it. And so we actually had to go take care of a lot of take care of a lot of issues for the uh, the trust that owned it to fix their situation with the bank mm -hmm. to get it to a place where we could um, you know consummate the transaction and go ahead and buy it. Mm -hmm. um, but we we came together pretty organically, pretty quickly after um, Smoke put it in motion. And Smoke, I know you talk a lot about how this gym it saved and it helped save a lot of people in the neighborhood. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and what it's meant to the people who may have grown up in South Central and, and help them stay out of trouble? Um, you know, in, in the neighborhood, um, idle time is the mother of all mischief. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm quoting that right, but um, if you understand what it takes to even be competitive in boxing, you know that you, you're, you're bringing out the best in people. You're pushing people and introducing them to their, uh, their capabilities, what they're what they're which inner strength they possess. And, um, and it's requiring a lot of time, consistency, and you're learning a lot of values just by assuming that, that level of difficulty, you know? Um, and it's such a powerful metaphor for life because even when you have a plan and you step in the ring, you know, your opposition has a plan as well. So to be able to adjust and be intelligent, you know, on the fly, that's, um, that's what a lot of these kids need to overcome, you know, their circumstances living in the hood. Mm -hmm. And G Perico, does that, does the gym now today, does it still give that same feeling where you step inside and you know that that's a place where you feel safe and that's a place where you can go, you know, in the community and get a good boxing lesson and, and, and feel like, um, you know, you are, you're there with people who care about you. Yeah, it's definitely a, a safe haven. And um, like moving forward, we want to make sure that we got you know, tons of support for kids, uh, up and coming boxers, professional boxers, to just know that they got love, support, uh, whatever they trying to do in life outside of boxing, you know, we want to um, provide support for that as well. So yeah, the boxing gym definitely um, still got that feeling. It's still there, it's, you know, uh, the energy from people that walk through there is still there. So, you know, it's a great place to, you know, come to. Um, and David, what do you what do you want from the gym? What are the ultimate goals uh, for Broadway boxing? Well, on the face of it, it was um, like like D Smoke said earlier, it was it was LA's gym. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a place where real boxers went to to hone their craft and get better. But it also served as you know a core piece of um, of the Broadway community. It was a it was a significant piece of the social infrastructure. In the neighborhood and we want to bring that back like g Perico just said we want to support people want to be better boxers but we want to support everyone in the neighborhood and whatever they're trying to um whatever they're trying to accomplish in life so we want to plant a flag right on the corner of 108th and broadway and say that um you know we're here we're here for this community mm -hmm. you know david supporting people in a neighborhood has always been very very important to you um for people who may not know you know you are from South Central LA, you left, you went to Texas, you came back. Um, a lot of people in your family um, got caught up in gang culture, but you somehow ended up on Wall Street. You're an investor. Can you just give us a little um, information about your background and, and why all of this, this community is so important to you? Yeah, like you laid out, I, um, I'm from LA originally, my family, third generation LA. I left when I was 10. Um, Texas, a long stop in New York before coming back. Um, probably a big part of me making it to Wall Street and um, never getting caught up is I, I did leave um, where I was in LA. And not to say LA is a, a shortcut to a problem, but um, 
I went to a very supportive kind of loving environment and I had some lucky breaks. Um, when I came back, I immediately connected with, you know, the, the, a lot of people who didn't have those lucky breaks and it became important for me to try to figure something out. And so Broadway is obviously an extension of, you know, me trying to figure that out. I think what's being done, what we're trying to do at Broadway, that's one thing, but I think who's doing it is as important. So it's super important for me to be doing it with, Jeep Rico um, on Broadway, and to be doing it with D Smoke, who you know had a decade-long history there, is different. It feels different when um, you have people like us who are really doing it, really for the love, and because we believe in something and want to be part of something that we know can be special. Mm -hmm. And speaking of doing something that you know that could be special, you guys are gearing up for a huge block party um, in a couple of weeks. Can you tell our soulmates what that's going to be like and how they can attend, and give us a little bit of information on that? David? Sure. Well, um, Perico's been, we actually almost did this a year ago um, when we were first trying to buy the gym before we had to sort out a lot of problems um, with the, the prior owners. Um, but Perico's been banging the drum about doing something for the kids and being all about the kids in the neighborhood. And so this block party, it is a block party, but it's a give back for neighborhood kids and families. Um, it's October 22nd from 11 to 2. Um, we'll, we'll have food for up to a thousand people. We'll have backpacks full of, full of um, back to school supplies. Actually, we have, we've had a lot of vendors tap in um, and we're gonna have just an incredible day of um, fun, music, carnival games, food, and a lot of give backs for the family, families and kids in the community. And that's, um, you know, I gotta give it up to Perico for championing that and banging on the table saying that's the first thing we gotta do when we buy this gym. We love that. That's the first thing we got to do is give back. G Perico, that is uh, an amazing uh, idea to do for the community. D Smoke, can you give us that address um, so people know where to go for the uh, block party? Well, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let G Perico do that. Okay. That's someone right. give someone give us the address so we know where that block party is going down. What is it 17? It's a, it's on the corner where it's a, it's multiple addresses at okay. the at the building. <laughs> But it's on the corner of 100 Nation Broadway, 10722 okay. South Broadway. Okay, awesome. 90061. Okay, thank you. Um, G Perico, D Smoke, David Gross, the co owners of the Broadway Boxing Gym, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you.